keeping you safe, informed, connected. This is News Channel 5 at 6. Tonight, new video shows how the increasingly bizarre campaign for mayor in Franklin is being viewed by some as a spiritual war. Good evening, I'm Carrie Sharp. And I'm Rory Johnston. That's right, we have video from a tent revival in Franklin late last week that shows how Gabrielle Hansen appears to believe that God is on her side. Well, critics say that's a wake up call about the dangers of those now trying to gain political control to force their faith on others. News Channel 5 Chief Investigative Reporter Phil Williams has been analyzing this new video. Phil? Now, to, to be very, very clear, this is not to disparage anyone's religious beliefs so much as it is to understand, specifically to understand how a candidate like Gabrielle Hansen continues to press on despite a growing list of scandals, including her association with white supremacists. And it shows why some are worried about where this could all lead. This video posted on Facebook by evangelist Amy Elizabeth Taylor shows a charismatic tent revival in the heart of Franklin. The event called Revival Glory was held in the same city park as this year's Pride Festival. The poster declared, quote, we are taking back the land by displacing demonic forces and ushering in his glory. The event included some of the same people tried to take over Franklin's historic town square every Saturday night, blessing out Christian music and claiming that time and space as their own. We have somebody here. On this night, the guest of honor, controversial Franklin alderman and candidate for mayor, Gabrielle Hansen, the elected official who led the charge to block the Pride Festival and defended the worship group against complaints about the disruption to the quiet of Franklin's downtown. Among Hansen's scandals, she lifted a social media image to falsely claim a group of women as her supporters and had white supremacists show up at a candidate's forum in a show of force for her campaign. Yet here... She is empowered to run for mayor. She is empowered to be the Henson's problems are blamed on demonic forces. And the enemy has been moving through people in our very community with deception, with lies. And that happens when we stand for truth. Here they pray over Henson and declare her to be God's chosen candidate for mayor. They insist her way is God's way. And they pray also, my sister, I bless you. for the miracle they believe she'll bring to the city. Now, other mayors come to this place and say, what did you do? I want to know how you changed this place. I want to know how there's no crime in this city. I want to know how there's no murder. There's no shootings. There's no rape. What does that tell you about this campaign? What well, tells me that is that it's from my perspective, it's steeped in um, in Christian nationalism. For years, Pastor Kevin Riggs has been sounding the alarm about the rise of Christian nationalism, especially in the Franklin and Williamson County area. Uh, a candidate like Hanson then would see that God has specifically called her to lead the city of Franklin uh, to be a Christian city, uh, to only have Christian laws, and, uh, and to overtake um, the, the political arena and give the political arena in the city back to Christ. Those things are called spiritual repercussions and they do come back to you and it's easy to shift all the blame. I just happened to arrive at a time where everything was starting to crumble. In fact, Hansen has cast herself as a prophetic figure. A Facebook photo shows Hansen was back at the revival the next night, driving a stake into the ground, supposedly to cast out the demons from the place where the Pride Festival occurred. Pride has the right to be at that park. This revival has the right to be at that park. 
uh, as well, and you can't discriminate between the two because it, then, then it would, we don't have a democracy anymore. There is a heavy demonic presence coming against you yes. from the school systems mm -hmm. because they know that something is going to have to leave the school system. Mm -hmm. Okay? And here, Hanson agrees with the evangelist that there's a demonic force inside Williamson County schools. Sitting down with school board member Eric Welch over a cup of coffee, we showed him the video. She says there's a demonic presence in the school system. Okay, it's preposterous and it's offensive. Preposterous and offensive, Welch says, to Christians like himself, especially coming from someone who's never been a part of the Williamson County school system. I think it's clearly, you know, Miss Hansen is playing politics here again. Uh, she's trying to use religion as a cudgel to sort of bash the, the school district. And here, Henson gives the demonic presence a name. But that's what I'm hearing, is that that is the strongest force against you right now. Yes. Wow, it is, because my competition's campaign manager is the wife of the Pfizer lobbyist that sits on the school board, wow. and that's who's attacking me. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh -huh. Josh Brown is a fourth generation Williamson County resident who just happens to work for the pharmaceutical giant Pfizer. It's very dangerous because where does it go from there? Wilch says Williamson County's own battles over those who want to ban certain books so no child can read them has revealed a growing trend in local politics. And I'm going to self-appoint myself as the public relations guy for, for you know, the Lord and I'm going to tell you that your point of view is wrong. So if you don't agree with me, you're evil. Offensive on so many levels. I mean, for one, we're not a theocracy here. And the whole idea of our school system being under some type of demonic control, well, that, that is an extreme view. I mean, I, my, my wife works in the school system. Uh, I know the school superintendents. I know what their faith is. So this giant in the school system, it has to bow right now in Jesus' yes. name. Yes. It turns out Henson and her critics may share one tiny sliver of common ground. This is the battle for our heart, our soul, our culture, your children and your grandchildren's future. Well, there may be some agreement in that, that th this is a pivotal moment, I think, around the world, around the country. Um, these groups, um, these conservative groups, this Christian nationalism, they're watching what takes place here because if, it can, if they can do it here, now there's a roadmap for their own communities to do the same thing. Yeah. Pastor Riggs says he believes Franklin has become the flashpoint for this battle because so many Christian conservatives and Christian influencers have moved here from other parts of the country in recent years and they see a chance to remake this community into a community that reflects their own values and carry. He says he thinks that Ms. Henson could win. So early voting has been going on. Today was the last day. How has the turnout been? Well, you know, the, regardless of which side you're on, that's the good news is that as of last night, almost 15% of registered voters had voted. Uh, that compares to just over 3% four years ago when the mayor was on the ballot. It's a big difference. Absolutely. All right, this all comes to an end next Tuesday on election day. We will all be watching. Thank you, Phil.